Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, this is going to be quite difficult to try and talk through this one, you know. I've been trying to... I mean, it's sat here just before I press record, thinking, how do I, how do I approach this? Um, so, basically, I've just pressed record. Let's just see how it goes. Um, I want to talk about uh, matching amplifiers and speakers together. I mean, there's, there's a lot of very common misconceptions about how that works, really. Um, and it's sort of been brought to light a little bit. I mean, I've not had this for a long time. Um, it used to be quite common, really, this, this, this sort of discussion with customers. But I've had a, uh, quite a, a few customers recently who've had issues with speakers. Um, and uh, there, is a, there is a sort of misunderstanding uh, that I want to try and address, really, that if you buy a, a matched, you know, if you buy a system that's all the same brand, or you buy an amplifier and the output of the amplifier is, is less than the rated output of the speakers, that you can't blow them up. You can't, you can't damage the speakers because everything's matched. Um, it's not true. It, you can't really do that. It isn't, it isn't really possible, actually. I, I'd, I'd be quite, I'm going to say, come up with quite a bold statement here, um, that any amplifier can blow any, any speakers. There, there's no real way around that. Um, I have thought of a car analogy because I like a car analogy. Um, it's a little bit like somebody buying a new car, driving it around or whatever, and ring up the dealership and saying, I've got a warranty claim. Um, I was driving along the car with the car at 80 miles an hour, and uh, it came off the road and hit a tree, and uh, so I want, it, I want it repaired under warranty. Uh, because I was only driving at, I mean, the speedometer in the car goes up to 160 miles an hour, and I was only doing half that. So um, it shouldn't have come off the road. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was just going around this right-hand bend, and uh, the, car ve the car veered off the road. And it's, I've had similar conversations about hi-fi. Um, I wasn't listening very loud. Yeah, I was only on half volume. Now, you would have thought, yeah, okay, how, they, this is a, surely with a, with a hi-fi system, there's nothing like the sort of an, the car analogy because you know, there's no corn, corners, there's no, you know, it's just, a straight, it's just a straight road, surely. No, it isn't at all. There's so many variables. And the biggie is the actual source component you're listening to. Um, and I've drawn a little diagram. I did preempt this little, this part of it. Imagine you've got, you've got three different sources. You've got a CD player, record player, and perhaps a nice old FM tuner. You don't really see these sort of things nowadays, but it's a good example. Um, partly because it proves why you need to have the travel on the volume control. Now, the top, you've got to, you've got, you've got to really visualise this. The top one, volume control, three volume controls. Now, the top one, so you can see you've got um, off, off position, so zero volume to full volume at this end, little zero to ten. Here, but from about halfway, we've got a red line. Now, if you're listening to CD, the danger area is from about halfway because CD is very high output, uh, about two volts plus in some cases, which is more than double standard line level. It's it's really high. Uh, an amplifier only has so much output, so if it's given a lot of input, it'll multiply it up, but it'll get to the point where it can't do it anymore. And in, at half volume on, a, on a, most amplifiers, it's giving it the amplifier is giving everything. Beyond that, you get distortion, and distortion is very damaging. It's, it's basically um, producing a signal that is uncontrolled, and when there's lack of control, things get hot, things expand, things do what they're not supposed to do. Next volume control down, record player. Now, record player is, is kind of standard output. Um, and on a record player, two-thirds, fairly safe, up to two-thirds. Don't take this as a, even this as a rule, because I've actually had systems where halfway on the volume control for record has been your limit, really. Not that it doesn't go loud enough. Don't sort of imagine that, well, I can't go all the way with volume control, therefore it's not going very loud. The amplifier is giving everything, just lower down the scale. Uh, and the last one, going back to good old FM radio, like I say, don't see it nowadays, which is a shame, but uh, say you've got a, a name Nato 1 tuner, which is a fabulous tuner, or a 101 tuner. Uh, which is quite a, quite a low output device anyway, and you're listening to Radio 3 live broadcasts, which is renowned to be the quietest signal-wise. Um, volume control, your little red section is right up at the top here. You'll find when you're listening to FM on live broadcasts and that sort of thing that 
you need nearly all the travel of the, the volume control. So that's why you need to have that extra movement on the volume control. Um, so you're not, you're not being cheated out of anything with your CD. You're getting exactly the same full, full volume output. It's just at a different place on the volume control. And that's where the confusion is, I think. It's people think, well, I should, well it goes right round to 10, so I, I should be able to use that. It's not the case. And th this is the car analogy. It's, y y your car may have a top speed of 160 miles an hour, but there's bends that come up in the road, there's, there's obstacles, there's all sorts of other things that come along. You can't drive through a town centre at full speed you use it appropriate to the circumstances and this is the same the same with you you know you, it's and it's even de the other thing as well is program material um i mean the difference in output between certain cds certain records even if you got plugged into the tv i mean a classic one if you've been if you're watching this uh, if an advert comes on just just take note of how how much louder the adverts are than than the, me talking uh, there's a huge huge difference and if you had me if you had me, turn, don't do this, if you had me turned up to the point where the amplifier was struggling and then an advert came on, you're going to, put, you're going to blow something. Um, yeah, don't do that. So, anyway, um, another side of this I wanted to show, uh, because if, if your speaker, if you find your bass unit's gone in your speaker, there's ways to check whether it's been overdriven um, up to a point. And I just wanted to show, I've got a speaker here which has been overdriven and a speaker here which is just faulty. And I can just show, sort of show you the differences. Hopefully, it's a bit dim in here actually. Well, the first one, I've got two, they're both Riga, Riga drivers. It's really unusual to get faulty Riga drivers, but I've got two here. Um, this one's an off, off an RX1. I suspect that this had been played just beyond its capability for quite a long time, actually. Um, and it's stopped working, distorting. There's quite a bit of distortion out of it. Now, as I was saying, if you put distortion into a driver, uh, it's a little bit, if you imagine, if you imagine your sort of music signals all sort of nice and controlled, when it gets to the point of distortion, it sort of starts to get all spiky and uncontrolled, really. And your little coil, basically your magnet at the back of here, has got a, a circle a, sl a, s a circular slot in it, and on the back of the dri this driver, there's a, a coil in a circle, which fits within it, and it dri it's driven by the, the magnet and the coil. Basically, the, the signal dr drives and moves in and out and creates the sound out of the driver. Now, when you put a distorted signal into that, that coil expands. It can melt the glues that hold it together. It didn't get mis misshapen. Um, and it starts to rub. Now this one has been sort of mildly overdriven. It doesn't, wor doesn't work now, but it's only mildly overdriven. And what you find is, the way to check is if you put your hands sort of equally around the driver, very, very carefully with this, and push the driver in, it, it should be nice and free. Now, if I put this next to the microphone, you can hear the distortion in the coils. Um, it's got quiet. That's me pushing the driver in now. Um, so basically when that's, that kind of plays, but you, that's the sound that you hear over the top of the music. In extreme circumstances, these can get s internally so hot and so de deformed that the driver just stops and, and jams. In a, uh, so it, you do this and you can't, it doesn't move. Uh, beyond that, and there is a, believe it or not, there is a beyond that, um, they can actually burn out in the middle. I've had, I've had drivers where the center of the, the, the cone here is actually detached from the coils because it's got so hot, it's actually destroyed the, the, poly the, the polypropylene or whatever material it's made out of, and the things separate out. So if a speaker comes in to me and it's making this sort of noise and it's obviously distorted internally, uh, it, there's no question about it, it's been played too loud. Um, and people do argue, they do argue about, oh, it wasn't very loud, it was, it was only just over half volume. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Here we have another Riga driver. Don't get the idea that Riga's are it's really It is really rare. Um, it used to be, Mission used to be the ones that used to go. And it wasn't, um, the fault that this has got was quite, used to be quite common with missions. I've never seen this on a Riga before. Uh, it came in today, this one. Now, this just doesn't work, just doesn't work. Connect it up, doesn't work. But, uh, if you can see inside, you won't be able to see inside. Let me just get, let me just put another light on to it to see if it can make. This is very on the fly, really. Right, phone. <laughs> see if I can make this work. I need a better camera for doing these things, don't I? See the little ter little terminals on the back of here. That 
beyond, out of the back of the little terminals there, there's some wires. Let's see if I can actually make that visible. You see that? Little wires there, and they sort of go from the back and they go in, into the centre of the driver. So two negative positive goes to the coil in the middle. So that's your signal to coil. Now with this driver, if you get, now don't do this at home because the chances of shorting your amplifier out are about 90%. You get the two terminals off the back of your speaker and you touch the coils internally, uh, well the actual, the, the, the wires that feed the coils. Now this driver, if you do that, it works. Um, so there's a fault within these feeder wires here. Um, so they must have internally fractured or something. It's not, it's not a solder issue because I've tried resoldering them. It's within that, where the actual suspension part is there. So that flexing of the driver has actually broken something, uh, which is warranty. Uh, there's there's a, new, a new one of these on the way. Um, but yeah, very unusual for eager that. But so if some, generally, if a speaker is completely dead, if the, if the base unit is, is dead like that, it, it's more than likely going to be a fracture, which is probably going to be warranty. If they're scratching, then you've blown them. I mean, that's just, I, I can't put it, put it any other way than that. You've blown your speakers and you may, you may not think you've listened too loud, but you, somewhere along the line, they've been driven, they've been pushed too hard and they've gone over the edge. It is quite rare, to be fair. I think I, I was trying to work out, I think generally I probably see one or two pairs a year of people who've actually physically blown the speakers up. I just seem to have a little bit of influx recently. To be honest, one of them is this one anyway, which isn't even, it isn't even blown, it's just failed. So, um, I had those and I had, um, was it a BMW or something? Yeah, I had a speaker that had been really completely cooked and I can't think, I can't think what, what make it was. Anyway, yes, so yeah, it, does, it does happen, but it's quite, it is very rare, so. Um, I, I, mean, I had to chat with, chat with the, one of these uh, guys here and he was very worried and he was saying, I don't, I don't know if I dare use my hi-fi anymore. Just, you, just have to, you just have to be aware, I think. And the way to tell with, a, with, the, with your hi-fi system, if, if you're turning it up and you're wondering if you're getting too close, you can tell, to be fair. If it's starting to sound unhappy, if you, particularly the bass end, if it's starting to um, clip, which is sort of um, where the bass sounds a little bit distorted, a little bit un, unhappy, a bit aggressive, and the top end starting to sound aggressive, don't take it, turn it, just back off a little bit. Um, like I say, or I did I say, because I'm not sure whether I did say this, it's actually easier to blow speakers with a lower powered amplifier. This, all this thing about, uh, about matching amplifier wattage to speaker wattage is a bit of a myth. I mean, it, it would be lovely if that was a thing, but um, it's, it, it, generally it's distortion that blows speakers, not power. I, I've used power amplifiers that have been way higher power rating than speakers and it's been fine. I mean, don't don't quote me on that, but um, generally I've never really had an issue like that. I think I've only ever had one, I mentioned this in a previous video actually, I did blow up a pair of Haybrooks with a 600 watt amplifier. Well it was an amplifier that had capabilities of 600 watt peak and the, I think the Haybrooks were rated at 100. And they were totally happy for a while until, and it was a, a drum record, it was a, a deep cut, so quite a high output vinyl um, special cut type record. and. When all the, the bass drums, there was a bit where there's a lot of bass drums kicked in, or do, 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 like this, and it just, it, just, it just failed. But it was probably running, probably running close to 600 watts for a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes. I was sort of listening to stuff and testing them out and whatever. And then just, it just sort of, forget it, I'm not doing it anymore. It stopped. Um, but that was unusual. I mean, generally, uh, you're more likely to, like I say, more likely, if you've got a little 10 watt valve on and you're trying to drive some inefficient speakers, you're more likely to do damage with that than you are the other way around really. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because I think, yeah, I think I've got the point across. I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll watch it back and might, might put a little, a few extra bits in if I can think of anything. But I think the car analogy is quite a good one. I think if you sort of think from another point of view, um, just because the numbers say this, it's not, there's too many other things involved. There's, you know, like I say, you you source, what you source is the actual program material and how much output there is there and all sorts of other things. So, yeah, just just go careful. Just don't push things. If things if things seem to be unhappy, then back off. When that's the thing. Um, yeah, let's leave, <laughs> let's leave it there. Um, what's going on at the moment? Um, 
yeah, nothing, nothing particularly new in at the moment, really. Nothing, no, nothing actually to talk about. It's, I think there's, there's a little bit of a lull at the moment. I think there's, there should be quite a lot of new things coming in in the next sort of month or so, but uh, nothing to talk about at the moment. Yeah, that's it, really. <laughs> Sorry, trying to find, desperately trying to find something else to talk about, but um, but I can't, so I'm going to go. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video. Don't forget to give a subscribe and a like. Um, we're rapidly getting towards 10,000 subscribers, which I'm ever so pleased about. Thanks for all your support. Uh, I will see you in a future video. Thank you very much.